Hi, welcome to Tech Bike Bots. Today I'm going to be showing you how to fit our um, short 2 to 1 tailpipe silencer system um, to the Triumph 1200 Scrambler. Now, the system on this, the standard system, though it's quite efficient, um, it has a couple of drawbacks. One, the cap gets very hot, and the other is it doesn't particularly sound very nice, and it's got this humongously heavy silencer system on the back here. Although it's made of stainless steel, it, it is a very heavy thing. And I'm going to show you now, we're going, to put, we're going to remove this and put it on the scales, and we'll put the new system that we make on the scales as well, and you'll see that what we replace this weight actually weighs what, exactly one third the weight of what we take off. This weighs 6.6 .6 kilos, and the silencer that we put on weighs 2.2. That, you know, it's, it's a significant weight saving, but even more so that it's so high up on the bike, that, and on one side of the bike particularly, that you, it, it, it sort of unsettles the bike, that, that all this weight up here. And you can really feel that weight difference on the bike when you put it on, as well as the, the improvement in performance and sound as well. But we'll, first of all, we'll show you how to take this off. No, that's another annoying thing with these, uh, this rubber plate in here, try and have them put long enough rubbers on and it tends to do this when you're riding along a bumpy road. So we've also, the new system actually utilises the standard covers, but I'll address that problem as well when, when we do it. So I'll we'll show you how to whip this off and then we'll, um, we'll get the two systems weighed. So you take the heat shields off, start at the rear, take the rear one off. Now you won't be using these screws again because we, these are 5mm and we actually supply 6mm screws and spacers for this panel. And as you can see they don't actually have a rubber at the top, all they have is a rubber at the bottom. So there's nothing to stop this thing rattling about. Um, a number of people have complained about it, about it. And so when you ride along a bumpy road or catch it with your leg, it makes a horrible clanky sound. So we're going to be reusing these heat shields. Which gives the bike still a, a very sort of standard issue look. But the sound is quite radically different looking. So we need to undo the, the clamps. You just need to loosen them. And note the position that they're in, because these it's easier to get this one over the top of the heat shield, and you can get that one at an angle underneath the heat shield if you need to tighten them up. Right, now we need a 12mm socket with an extension. There's two bolts hold the silencer on. One's in from the top, and the other one you actually go in from the rear uh, into the back. But you, if you look from the other side of the tire, you can see that one. So I tend to take the uh, inside one off first. Just be careful when you take these out because the, the top hat spacers and rubbers tend to drop out on the floor and roll away. So just be careful and get ready to catch them when they come out. So each side you've got a, a top hat spacer and a, and a rubber, and the same underneath. And if, you do, if that drops out and rolls away and you don't notice it, it won't tighten up properly if you haven't got one of them in, because it's designed to tighten against the spacers. So, if you just ease that up gently off the, off the seals. We won't be using the clamps because they're a different size. So you get new clamps included in the kit. So this is the, the silencer assembly and uh, mid-pipe that goes on the bike. Uh, I've actually all assembled it all up there to show it goes on. Um, we've actually put a big rubber buffer on there for the, to stop this rattling about. Now you can actually have this in two positions. You can have it here, we can actually have it further back 
if you, if you carry passenger luggage a bit more, it might be uh, a bit more advantageous to have it in the rear. But for looks, I personally prefer to have it in this position here. But I'll show you on the bike how, how that works. Uh, and also I'll show you now how, how light this is on the scales. So this is the, the kit of parts that you get to go on the bike. This exhaust actually been run on the bike. It was a development one and it, it is a little bit discoloured. Obviously when you get a brand new one, it'll not be as um, discoloured as this. In the centre, we have a plain tube. Now, you might think, why didn't we just join this pipe straight to the silencer and save a bit of waste? We did this basically to, to allow future um, modifications to the exhaust, either by us or by users. This will allow you to either fit an extra baffle or um, absorption baffle down the side in here, or you can put a, if you tend to use it in forests and anything like that, you can put a spark arrestor in here, just tack weld one in, a mesh spark arrestor. But we leave it as a plain tube at the moment, so if you, you just want to add anything like that, you can simply tack it into this tube and then slip the tube inside the exhaust like that. So it gives you options. Um, now the, the silencer actually comes with a removable baffle in the back, which again you can fine tune by cutting to different lengths or adding different holes to it. So it's a pretty adaptable system to get the fine tune what, what you particularly want. So first of all, we need to fit the the, the small stub pipes onto here with it with the clamps provided. Now the shorter one goes to the bottom. Now you'll see there's a very slight offset on it, and what you need to do is, is put them on. They're a fairly tight fit. Now what you might have to do is just twist these slightly to get them, because like I said they've both got an offset bend on them, so just to get them to line up with the pipe. So just make sure that's fully onto the pipe and then you can put your spring on to keep it in place. We won't tighten the clamps up yet until we get the full system on. So if you haven't inserted this already, just insert the mid pipe in there. Now you need to mount your hanger bracket. Now you've, you get a, a small button head screw. There's a spring washer, a flat washer, and there's a flat washer either side basically on the slotted bracket. Now if you leave that loose when you're fitting it, and it gives you room to, to manoeuvre it to get it in exactly the right position. You know, to get your rubbers and your top hat bushes, put those in either side. It's a little bit fiddly to get this on. Slip it right up and rotate it around. So we tighten your hanger bolt to 18 newton meters. You can put your springs on now so everything goes into the right position. You can level it up and tighten your Both these nuts are in 18 Newton meters. And that's nice and solid there. You can pull the bike on it, it's really, really well rubber mounted and solid. So next we need to nip our two 10 millimeter pump bolts up. So you have this one pointing downwards about 45 degrees. And this one pointing upwards. Just so if you need to tighten them, 
You can actually get in without taking your shoes off. Now you see you've got little rubbers on here that these hook onto. Make sure it's hooked onto all three of them there. And yep, holes lined up here at the front. We reuse the original screw here. But at the rear, you fit the M6 lug nut to this sliding mount here. And this is a little bit fiddly to get in because it's, it needs to hook underneath first. Then you need to line your holes up. I haven't taken that up fully just yet. Right, this is where your options come in. This little link piece here, you can either fit it to the silencer here like I've, I've got it and use the, the long bolt through here with the spacer, mount that through all the heat shields and then this one will line up and then you can mount it on there so it gives you that position or you can mount that bracket, the spacer, then that bracket, then the bolt on here and then mount that directly to the silencer and mount that mount it so it's in this position here so it, it, it pulls it back about 40 millimeters so it's a matter of personal choice where you want it do you want it there or there there or there personally i prefer to have it in this position here because i think it looks neater from the rear it does give the exhaust a bit of a short appearance so if you find it looks a little bit short from the side you may want to put it in the other position at least you've got the choice to do it. Now all the brackets are slotted, so you've got loads of adjustment, unlike the original Triumph system that's not, and these heat shields can be an absolute pain to fit. So, washer, screw, spacer, and then again, washer, bolt, Slides it. I love the backwards and forwards to get it in there. There we go. As you can see, we've actually kept the cost down and the factory finished look by keeping all the original um, heat shields. Now, what you will find because it's much freer flowing at the back end you'll find that the cat doesn't get anywhere near as hot as what it used to um, because it's the gas is on being backed up back into the cat uh, generally the whole system runs a lot cooler uh, which is one of the big issues with this bike when in around town and in the summer Right, as you can see, it's, it, it's really straightforward to fit. It only takes about 20 minutes to take the old one off and put the new one on. Uh, but before I fire it up, uh, I just want to talk a bit what, how we ended up with, with, with this system the way it is. Um, we were looking to make a full system. Um, and also, we'd been doing a lot of decats on these to try and get the heat down. Uh, what we found with this, because the heat comes out uh, a lot better at the back end, the cat's to a point now where you don't really need it to uh, decat it to get the heat down. Probably the most you would need to do if you lived in a very hot city is probably just to wrap the cat just to stop the heat soak through here. Um, the decatting didn't really give you much in the way of performance at all. Uh, in fact, some of the decat H pipes also actually lose mid range power. Um, so we didn't really want to go down that road. Now, what we did, we were sort of inspired for this system by this system that we, I used to run this on my 900 Scrambler. And a lot of people started running these on the 1200. Now you had to modify the centre section because the bend was in a different place. Uh, and I think most people actually shortened the back end. But it is quite a nice looking pipe. 
The only problem with it is the front pipes. Now, the fr this pipe, pipe was, pair of pipe was designed for a 900 motor. Now, we ran it on a 1200, and it actually killed the top end power because it hasn't even got 40 mil pipes, it's got 38 millimetre pipes on the front end. Uh, probably because 38 millimetre pipes are a lot cheaper than 40 mil. Um, now, the problem with that is it, it, it just doesn't give enough flow for the 1200 motor. Um, and it does kill the top end power, but it actually it doesn't really affect the, the torque very much lower down. So if you don't ride it, you know, use the full power of the motor, you probably wouldn't notice. But uh, like I said, these aren't really a straight bolt on because the shape's wrong. Um, great on a 900 motor uh, if you're not looking for performance, but they, they basically don't work right. Another thing that we did look at, probably like a lot of people who make exhausts, after the guy Martin Crit Escape video came out, uh, the next day I made some of these um, turn out straight through. Now, I must admit, I thought they would have run quieter than what they did um, with the cat in place, because the cat, the cat does make it quite a bit quieter. But with the straight pipes, though, it was just a little bit too loud. You, you, really, for the road, it was a bit, a bit too loud. Um, and as you can see, I actually put a couple of uh, mute washers in the end, and it was just about acceptable there. So we did knock a few of these out for some Triumph dealers who were doing special ed editions and they do look really nice on the bike. Um, but you've got no heat shielding on the back so unless you wanted to start making a heat shield for them you cannot really carry a passenger. Um, and to be honest, I, 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 I'm a bit divided on these. I, in some ways I like them, in some ways I don't. But to get the, level, the noise level down to where they want to be by putting the mutes in it kills the performance too much compared to this system. This system's got a nicer sound. Um, and for looks wise, I don't think there's that much difference in it. And it means you can still carry a passenger in the back as well if you, if you want to. Plus we could make this system at a really low price as well because we utilize the standard heat shield. So uh, I'm gonna start it now. Take it outside and start it up and let you decide what you think about the sound of it. 